we wanted to see exactly what that range is, let's try that trick. Let's drop the saturation all the way down. We see that the berries are a grayscale and the things that are going to be affected are essentially her lips, a little bit of what's happening in her arm and the berries are not there. This can be a very effective tool for combining masking with this. So if I press B for the brush tool and I brush on her lips here and mask that away, mask this away, increases back up. We now know that the, her lips, her face and her hands will not be affected by this change because we use this quick trick here to desaturate the colors that wouldn't be affected. Today, I wanna to share some advanced tips and tricks with you with the HSL adjustment layer. Are these some untold secrets or do people just not use this quite as often? I would probably go with a little bit of both. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to use the HSL adjustment layer with some surgical precision to get your colors dialed in exactly like you want to. You're also gonna notice that I changed my camera angle here. I went from there to about 18 and a half inches that way. Why? Maybe I needed a change. How does it work? Do you like that way or this way? I don't know. I'm gonna see how it works out for me. So let's dive in. We are in Photoshop now. I'm gonna add an HSL adjustment layer here. Now I'm not gonna cover what HS and L is very specifically in this video. Actually, what I'm gonna do is refer you to an older video that I already did on this and I'm gonna replay that clip now. In terms of color theory, hue means what color is the color or what identifiable principle do we give that color? Like red, green, blue, right? Saturation is how intense is that color from zero being 50% gray to 100 being way too much of that color. And the lightness is how dark that color is that we're adding to this image. Now that we've got H, S, and L out of the way, what I wanna talk about with this advanced concept with using the HSL adjustment layer is this area right down here. Okay, what this is telling us is that we are in the master section. So we are basically going to be modifying all the colors in the entire spectrum or the entire color wheel on this image. What that means is that this top bar is the control. This is saying that this is where your reds are. This is where your yellows are, your greens, cyan, so on and so forth. As we move the hue to change the color of the color, you'll notice that the bottom bar moves, it shifts. Well, what is it doing? Where is it shifting? Well, it's saying that now our yellows are green. Our reds are now turning yellow. If we move this all the way over here, it's now saying that our yellows are blue. Our reds are cyan. You see how that works? So the control is on the top, that will never change. And on the bottom, that's how the hue is changing specifically in all of the colors that are happening here. What I wanna cover is this area extensively today. I'm not gonna be covering colorize because it's actually very simple. You click this button and it colorizes your photo based on the hue, saturation, and luminance values that you choose with the colorize button chosen. And it tells you down here, if this is your control, this is the color that you're adding on top of your image. I've already done a color grading video on this before on my YouTube channel, so I'm not gonna cover that. I wanna cover these eyedroppers and this slider here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab the targeted adjustment tool and I'm gonna click on something like the color red. So when we click on the color red with our targeted adjustment tool, you'll see that we now get this thing down here. And anytime something new happens in Photoshop, when you click on something, our first and immediate reaction isn't, ooh, what does that do? It's, ah, avoid it like the plague. <laughs> okay, we aren't gonna avoid this like the plague because this is where you get surgical precision in modifying your colors. What this is telling us down here is that we have selected the color red, and this is the range of colors that are going to be affected by anything we do up here, okay? So now let's take that and maybe target the yellows. You'll see it shifts over to the yellow. Target the greens, target the cyans. See how it changes and it shifts, and when it does change and shift, it also changes what's happening up here. Alternatively, if we select this eyedropper right here, that will select that individual color as well. You'll notice that a big change just happened here. Why do we have a reds two up there? I get this question quite often. Let's click on the drop down. What do we not see anymore? Well, in here, we don't see cyan anymore, do we? What happened is when we went into the color cyan and then we use this eyedropper to click on the color reds, it made a reds two, meaning we now have two areas where red is going to be affected by any change that we make. If we use that eyedropper and we click back here, we are going to get back to our cyans and have cyan in here as well. So if you ever see your color change completely and it's no longer in the drop down, it's because you told a color to become a different color based on the eyedropper that you chose to select it, which could give you multiple ranges for any one given color, making it very easy to stack color adjustments within the uh, HSL adjustment layer. But let's click on the color reds. So what I wanna do here is I wanna increase the saturation of the color red. 
I'm just going to make it really nasty and kind of garish, okay? I want to show you what this, both of these do down here. In the middle, this is the context or the range of the color red that we're going to be affecting. This space right here is the feather on how far out it goes into other areas. This can be very tricky to use, especially if you just increase the saturation and expect to see different results down here as we move this stuff over. It might not be as evident in images that aren't the color wheel, which I'll show you practical application in a second. So the way that we can see this is very similar to how I use blend if. If you've ever seen a blend if video of mine, you'll know that I put a color overlay inside the layer styles so that as I move blend if I can see a magenta overlay as things move. I do not recommend using a color for that here. Instead, I would recommend dropping the saturation. That way we see a grayscale value for where the color red that is being affected is. So now this will help us estimate where the spread is going to be and what colors it goes into because any colors that we change now are going to turn this gray scale that we see here. So if we increase the feather, which is going to increase the spread, it's going to slowly spread itself out into the yellows. But if we wanted to grab the actual physical copy of yellow, we'd move this over and that would include the color yellow in that as well. Now, obviously I don't recommend leaving it this way. This is just for you to get a visual of where the spread is going to be. So I'm gonna move this up and then as I move the saturation up, you start to see that the yellows and the reds get affected by the saturation adjustment and then quite possibly even the adjustment of the hue if we wanted to do that as well. It's just a way to see what that might look like. And I'll show that in practical application in one of these images coming up here. Now I wanna talk about these eyedroppers here as well. Now let's say after you've made that selection, you're like, you know what? I really don't want the yellows included in there. What we can do is we can just grab this negative eyedropper and click on the color yellow, and then even go further down into the oranges and then see, okay, we only want that adjustment to be on the color red. Let's take a look at this in practical application because I think it'll make a lot more sense when you see it working on a photo. So here is an image of Rocky Mountain National Park, Bear Lake. This was last year. I went just before all the colors started changing uh, but at autumn, so I didn't really quite get there in time, but I can make it look as if I did. And I can do that with the HSL adjustment layer. You've probably seen me modify colors with many other things, like selective color, but there's actually a really great way that we can make these colors look better. So let's make a selection for something in this deeper kind of orangish color. I'll go right here. Looks like that's gonna be the color red. Okay, so as I'm selected here on the color red, I wanna make them appear as if they are further along in the color changing process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the hue over and make that a little bit more of that deeper reddish orange that we would get, that beautiful fall changing colors of the leaves, okay. Now, maybe I wanna increase the saturation for that a little bit too. I'll bump up the saturation. Anytime I increase the saturation specifically to that amount, I'm also gonna add a little bit of black to that to taper it off a little bit to decrease the brightness that comes along with that saturation as well. So if we look at our image now, we turn the preview on and off, you see that these reds are looking great. But what if I want that to also include the yellows? Well, I could press this plus sign here and I could click on that color yellow right there. Okay, now we start to see that as that color spreads over into the yellows, it's like, whoa, hold on a second. That's gonna look really unrealistic if we keep it that way. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drop the range here a little bit, okay? And then maybe close it in over here on this side as well. Maybe drop that saturation a little bit. And you'll start to see here that that autumn color looks great with a little bit more of that yellow included. Now, look at the feather and how this moves its way out. If we wanna make the green appear more along the uh, changing of the colors of the leaves, we would move the range over this way as well. Obviously, if it's too much, you can move the hue back over towards the yellowish area, maybe even drop the saturation a little bit as you increase this range. So look at the before and the after. Now, if we really didn't want any of that green in there at all, I would obviously move this range down so we could still have that green with the yellow and orange sparsed and intermixed throughout the image. I personally feel that this being a stronger orangish red in those leaves uh, gives us a, a much better look for an autumn image because it separates the yellows from the greens and makes them pop out a little bit more and makes this appear as if those leaves are a little bit further along. Now let's take a look at this portrait image. I believe this is a perfect candidate for this technique because I want the berries to be a little bit more bright and popping, but I don't want it to affect her skin tones. So if I go into the HSL adjustment layer and I click the targeted adjustment tool and click on this red berry, it should be the color red. 
but you'll notice that as we increase the saturation of the color red to make that red just seem so much more lively and robust, again, if I increase this pretty high, I'll also want to decrease the luminance on there and make it a little bit darker to take the brightness away from it. You'll start to see that it affects her skin tones as well. So if I don't want that to affect her skin tones, I can take this negative eyedropper and just click somewhere on this area here where we start to see her cheek. Now what you'll notice is that it took the range and it just made it slightly smaller. If we go to our history, I'll go back. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to pay attention to this slider right here. As I click the minus sign and click on her skin tones, watch how her skin tones get a little bit more neutral and it really only affects that berry. Now if we really don't want it to affect her skin tones at all, we would then take this range and start dropping the range down and you start to see that if, as we increase the range, it starts to feather out into her skin tones. If we decrease it, it doesn't affect her skin tones at all. And now we've got that brightening of the berries and maybe even a little bit of the brightening on her lips without the brightening on her skin tones. If we wanted to see exactly what that range is, let's try that trick. Let's drop the saturation all the way down. We see that the berries are a grayscale and the things that are going to be affected are essentially her lips, a little bit of what's happening in her arm and the berries are not there. This can be a very effective tool for combining masking with this. So if I press B for the brush tool and I brush on her lips here and mask that away, mask this away, we now know that these are areas that will not be affected by this adjustment. Okay, so then after we mask this away, We've brushed all of that away. When we go back over into the properties of the uh, HSL adjustment layer here and then go into the color reds, we increase this back up. We now know that the her lips, her face, and her hands will not be affected by this change because we use this quick trick here to desaturate the colors that wouldn't be affected. Highly, This is a highly effective way to get surgical precision with the areas in your image that you want to have boosted without affecting other areas in the image. In this image, we analogously increased the spread of that color by saying we want more. We want red transitioning into yellow. In this image, we said, wait, we don't want the analogous to come with this. We only want the color red. We are very specific about what we targeted in that so that it only affected those colors of reds. Now this image I selected because I wanna show you that even with this newfound knowledge, it's not always going to be perfect, okay? There are some limitations. It doesn't make this HSL adjustment layer some type of magical superhero that's gonna fix all your color problems. You're still gonna to need to know all the other color tools in Photoshop like selective color and the use of gradients, which I use quite often. So we'll put an HSL adjustment layer on here. And let's say I want this blue area back here to be a little bit stronger. I'm gonna click on that color, which is actually the magentas, and I'm gonna increase the saturation. So as I increase the saturation, you're gonna notice that I, I can only go so far before I start getting what's called color banding up here. And that color banding is working against us, and there's not much we can do with that. So if we try to select maybe more of another color, like this color here, and which would be probably into our blues, or maybe increase this spread a little bit here to see if we can maybe get more of that included, we still can't take it too far before we get this color banding. These tips and tricks here, even with this range adjustment here, won't always be the trick that's going to save you. If you do increase it further into the oranges and the reds, it is going to help with that color banding so that we don't get it quite as bad. But just know that if you're trying to be very selective about just this color blue, it's not gonna work very well with just the HSL adjustment layer alone. It will help us avoid color banding, but only if we increase the range. But if we increase that range, you're starting to see that that's also affecting all the other colors in the image, which would create a headache for us and maybe have to use some clever masking to come in here and brush away the areas that we wouldn't necessarily want that increase. So here's our before, here's our after. With this, I'd also probably drop the opacity a little bit here so it's not quite as strong and powerful. Either way, we still see some banding up there, so it's not gonna be a one quick fix for everything. Now you just watched me give you all the tips and tricks on how to use that slider that's at the bottom, that range slider that's at, about, at the bottom of your HSL adjustment layer within individual colors. I can guarantee you this though, just by watching this, you're not gonna be able to grasp it right away. I'm gonna need you to experiment. Go into some, open some images, 
increase the saturation in a very specific color, adjust the range, adjust the feathering, and see how it reacts to your images. It's the only way you're going to master all the tools in Photoshop is after you watch me work with them, you open up your own images and see how it works. I would say that before recording this video, I worked with the HSL adjustment layer and the range and feather for probably three to six hours on various different types of images before I really had a good handle on it and could teach it. I know in the past I've given the HSL adjustment layer a bad rap after learning things like selective color and gradients and color overlays, but it really does have a place in our color theory workflow. And I hope you notice that in this video and you can start using it in your workflow. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. I'm gonna put this video in this playlist here, which is my color grading playlist. If you wanna learn more about color grading, color theory, go ahead and click there. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.